so much for joining us today. Of course, thank you for inviting me. Look at that hair. Self propped up. <laughs> look amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for allowing us to give you your flowers for Black History Month. Oh, wow. Um, one of the things that have been happening is people have been requesting you. Yes. And who was one of the biggest requests? <laughs> one of the biggest requests was from a photographer by the name of Tanya Smith. She's the one who put us on to you. Oh, wow. We, well, we were talking about great photographers. Especially women especially photographers. women, because we always want to know who is amazing. And Tanya literally was like, have you checked out Kesha? And I was you like... You know who Kesha is? I was like, <laughs> like I know the name. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. You know, I, went, I went Keisha, and she was like, no, she Kesha. <laughs> so one of the funny things in the rooms with Kesha is she's constantly correcting people. <laughs> and she was like, Kesha, Kesha. Yeah. Kesha. Sometimes I sometimes I just let it ride, you know. <laughs> so but, when um, so so let's ask you that what would make you let it ride and what would make you not let it ride? Kind of like, you know, I guess it's kind of like reclaiming my time kind of <laughs> thing. <laughs> because like <laughs> it's a very, you know, I understand why it happens is, you know, names are important so but at the same time it's just like it happens a lot. So um, I'm I'm actually surprised when people pronounce it Kesha the first on the first try. <laughs> um, when that as day, long as they sign that check right, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what that's about. So, um, let me ask you, where are you based out of? I am based out of New Rochelle, New York. So I'm in the New York City market. Okay, um, I live in the burbs though, so I live in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. It's a commuter town to New York City, so a lot of people who live in my town commute into New York. Um, but I decided to have a business presence in New York because I was raised in the Bronx. And um, when you do people work, it's very relationship based. And all of my relationships are rooted in New York. Okay. The New York market is also just be slightly better than the Connecticut one. And <laughs> exactly. It's, it's far more sexy. You can so, say when people yeah. say, oh, I'm from New York, like where they go, Albany. It's like, mm, mm, not so well, much. Well, yeah, <laughs> but no. Technically, technically yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us, um, first of all, we love your work, and it's magnificent. And love please, your perspective. love your perspective. Please tell people who you are and what you do. So I am a wedding and portrait photographer. I am a, you know, I do, I, I primarily bill myself as a wedding and portrait photographer, but I do other types of work. Um, and I'm based in the New York City tri area. So the bulk of our weddings and engagements happen in the New York state area, but we travel all over the country and internationally to photograph weddings. Um, and I'm also an educator in photography. So I, my, my, my lane and my wheelhouse is primarily things surrounding weddings, like my experience-based things. Um, so anything from, you know, working on the fly and event lighting, things like that. But also my, my passion business of photography so I do I do uh, offer like a lot of um, a lot of my educational uh, work is surrounds you know building and growing a business and people relationships like I do believe that um, you know your mindset as a business owner and learning how to work with people is so that's another kind of big thing for me and you would, you know. would think that you wouldn't have to teach people how to deal with people it is, listen, it is such an overlooked thing, but it's extremely important when you're doing people work to un know how to understand people, understand what makes people tick. And that varies from person to person and understanding how to tap into that. So I think that's one of the things that has served me well in terms of not only having successful client relationships, but getting through rough patches with people because that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. um, you're providing your creativity. As a service, you're going to run into missing the mark and, you know, businesses are run by human beings. You're going to make mistakes. So that people component is critical. I'm going to say something that you may find embarrassing and I apologize. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm looking at you like a beauty photographer. You have a great face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These uh, eyebrows you have? <laughs> and my, my, my cheekbones that'll stab you. Like, the jawline? So, you know, Thank if you we so ever much. Are in the tri-state area, we do, we're doing you well. Oh, okay, I'll take that. Listen, that would be a treat. Now. 
And you have a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful face. face. Yeah, Your oh, bone structure, not to mention the melanin. Oh, shoot. Well, thank you. I appreciate so, it. I, I have I'm, to put that I'm out there. I'm not embarrassed. I'll receive that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. So we give me flowers and photo shoots. So I'm happy about that. Yes. So growing up That's in the it. Bronx, growing up in the Bronx, how yes. did you get into art? How did you get into photography? So um, I'm Jamaican. So I am Jamaican, but born here, raised here. Um, actually lived in Jamaica for two years when I was in infant. Don't remember anything about it, but I am Jamaican. So I say that's relevant because I had a strict West Indian upbringing um, where if you're familiar with the culture, you're not doing anything with your life unless you have a profession. Exactly. And, <laughs> and a couple of degrees. You need to, exactly. So like um, that, you know, Photography and art was a creative outlet for me because it wasn't on my radar that this would be a career. My father is uh, a retired physician. He was head of uh, radiation oncology um, at uh, Stony, Stony Brook for many years. And my mom also, um, like Jamaicans, she was a nurse and she w went very high up in, in administration. And oh, so you're supposed to be a doctor. I'm supposed to be some, well, definitely not a doctor because I'm <laughs> Spanish, but I, I, I am a lawyer because, so, you know, th those are the options, right? <laughs> um, doctor, lawyer, engineer, some, some kind of profession. No, I, my mom always drilled that in my head. I was definitely indoctrinated to prioritize and place importance on that. Um, but my mom is also an artist. So she, in Jamaica, she used to sing in her heyday. She had, she had her moment. Um, she also paints. Um, so art and music was a big part of my life, even though there was this focus on, you know, take your book seriously. <laughs> um, nice. And surprisingly, she really embraced my transition from the law, legal career to the photography world. Nice. nice. What law did you study? Uh, all, all of it. <laughs> okay. But um, what I practiced, so straight out of law school, my first job out of law school was um, in criminal law uh, de defense. And I worked for a small uh, solo practitioner. And um, it was quite an interesting experience. He, uh, he represented members of the Ambino crime family. I don't know if you are familiar with them. Um, yes. yes. <laughs> who isn't, maybe. But um, so that was like a fat, sh my, like a one year stint out of law school. But thereafter, I, um, did commercial litigation for a couple of years. I did um, uh, real estate and bankruptcy. And then the very last thing before uh, things, the kind of light switch flipped uh, is uh, what I was working in-house at an investment bank. Um, I was not practicing law, but it sat in a general counsel's office. So it was AML. Mm -hmm. um, don't necessarily need to be a lawyer to do anti-money laundering compliance. But um, they had a preference for uh, for lawyers, and so that's how I ended up there, doing that. And that was kind of my last kind of uh, full time gig in law before becoming starting this journey on on becoming a photographer. So I'm practicing law. We're defending criminals. <laughs> We're doing all <laughs> that was this, for like two seconds. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I picked up this camera, and voila! So how did you foray? into photography so it definitely wasn't all of a sudden i you know it's a it's a cliche I, it, it has been a hobby since i was a child it's been an interest since i was little um so and i remember i even before going to law school i had a, the cutest little business <laughs> it was so adorable i was like a teenager and i was like i'm gonna have a business um and I had this digital Sony Cybershot camera. Ooh, a Cybershot. Remember that? I'm going back. I made it myself. Those, those cameras were cute. They, and listen, I didn't know what I was doing, but I loved how my, I love how it took pictures. Um, I love how that. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I, I, and my first interest was in fashion photography. So I used to pull my friends aside. And then I, you know, I've always been fascinated by people. I slowly get kind of found myself get, gaining an interest in portrait work. Um, and I even throughout law school, I dabbled. So like mm. I was there, it was like, it was like a freelance thing that turned into a side hustle. Mm. Um, and then the side hustle. And that's the Jamaican in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 jobs. 10 jobs, <laughs> yep. yep. So how did that foray into uh, wedding work? So 
I I would say it started weddings in particular started with me kind of helping other people with weddings. I was very fearful to like I I, I really admire the bravery of people who just jump right in and shoot weddings. Like I think even like Jermaine have, Horton, he don't be playing. <laughs> no, I mean like don't be playing. Yeah, like I mean like people who have never shot a wedding who just rip the band-aid and start because Ooh. um one you know the stakes are high like there's no do there's no do overs yep and if you know anything about weddings they're very nuanced and the, you know a big a big part of it is being experienced and knowing how to 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 our favorite word pivot and how to like deal with some of the challenges that are unique to weddings so but my interest in it started from like helping other people with weddings and i just i'm, I'm gonna be cheesy i fell in love with weddings Aww. it's really yeah I'm, I'm i'm a sap um because i think it's just something very happy to 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 be a part of uh i feel like we're creating uh we're a part of someone's personal history like this, this is going to be potentially something that they show through generations. And I'm not just creating, you know, I'm creating a work that's going to be shared through generations and touching multiple lives. And so, what's going to be funny is they're going to be talking to their grandkids. Uh -huh. And they're going to say, those we photos. have this beautiful black woman. She <laughs> no photos. She had all this hair. She, I thought it was Diana Ross. She was <laughs> Oh, so y'all have jokes. Oh, we got <laughs> jokes. Oh, hey, All day. Two shows, 8 11. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we're glad that, and people are saying they're so glad that you did. What were some of your <laughs> biggest obstacles doing weddings? Like, what was one of the biggest aha moments you've had at, when you first started shooting weddings? I've had multiple aha moments, um, aha moments surrounding people, aha moments surrounding execution and um you know like aha moments surrounding being true to myself and being a, like so my i would say three if i had to wind down to three aha moments one in terms of people the uh, aha moment i had with clients is that although this is a business and a service it's super super personal and oh boy you need to make it you need to touch and reach people's hearts you need to make it warm and fuzzy and fluffy and you need to understand people so that was kind of like an aha moment that if I wanted longevity I needed to know how to decode people and I needed to also know how to you know I kind of I've always had thick skin um when it comes to interactions with people but that is super important mm -hmm. um the other aha moment in terms of execution was um, I am one of those people that was afraid of flash and strobes at one point, and there's still things that I continue to learn about it, but the, an aha moment for me was that I better develop a broad range of skill set because weddings will throw all kinds of lighting situations at you. They will throw all kinds of uh, technical challenges, and, um, and I needed to get my skill set up in that so that I could I wouldn't be this, there's no, you are just a, um, a, a daylight photographer unless you're only going to take uh, day weddings. So if you take your, you know, the, the weddings that I was, was doing were like these large uh, multicultural weddings. Some of them happen across 12 hours and more and, or, you know, you, you're going to get encounter all kinds of situations. And um, yeah, and then the third and your aha, third aha, uh -huh. yeah. My third aha uh -huh was that I needed to find a balance between being a business and being the artist that wowed them in the first place, and giving them the product that they love. Because as you grow in the wedding industry, I tend I, I attract a lot of people who know what they want, um, and. I track, encounter all kinds of personalities, some that um, may even have an inclination to micromanage, things like that. Or, you know, people who worry a lot and they, they, they want to plan everything out to the minute. And, and we to, know that doesn't work. That doesn't work is a great, <laughs> that like kills your mojo. In order to get like the best outcome, you have to, you know, you have to, I, I needed to know myself and what, what got me revved up and do more of that and let the clients know that I need to be able to do that. Otherwise, otherwise, all those pretty things you saw on my website, you're not going to get it. <laughs>
Like, it's just, you're going to get default mode, Kesha, where I'm doing what's safe and do, you know. And so kind of like realizing that while I am pri providing a service and I have to deliver on my contract obligations, I'm also providing my art and I need to be able to do that, you know. So that was like a third aha moment that I, I needed my clients to be able to give me that freedom. And so I started focusing a lot of energy and attention on how I could get there with them. So let's ask, wow. let's get to the nitty gritty wow, wow. and uh -oh. let's <laughs> sip our tea for a moment. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Have you had any bridezilla moments? Few and far between, but yes, I've had some bridezillas and even a groomzilla and a momzilla that made me want to like, made me question, why am I doing this? You know, like. So did that Bronx girl come out? Bronx girl is in there, but I'm a, always a professional first, right? Um, Absolutely. I, I am, it's funny you should say that, because one of the things I would get teased for growing up in the Bronx is how, like, I sound funny when I even use, use slang, and, like, they would tease me for, like, you speak proper. <laughs> so, you, so, you, so, Kesha's not the hood girl. There's a little bit. So, you can't go, ah. Eh, I'm not a hood girl. I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm definitely not a hood girl, but. I am a Bronx girl. So oh, what okay. I mean by that, <laughs> what I mean by that, so there's my personality. I'm inclined to be diplomatic. I am a diplomat. So that was like my nickname and friend groups and things like that. Um, I, can't, I am very empathetic and I, I'm very thoughtful about the words I choose when engaging with people. So that's always just been an inclination of mine. But there is the Bronx girl. There's the girl that read for filth and all that wonderful stuff or oh I, I i i caught the actions i've seen it in the rooms <laughs> you see that hand? I, no, i've seen i've seen it i've seen it there's um everything. you know ask my husband <laughs> he'll tell you but you know there there are there are you know that girl is there um i've even had my one of my associate photographers on my team like like she she knows when um when i've had to throw down with it with somebody else you know assert myself I I will give a professional read, but <laughs> but you know one of the things I do know that is important is that you know your reputation needs to always precede you, precede you, and so you need to in in your interactions walk away sometimes. Like if I feel Absolutely. if I feel that kicking in and it's a situation, it's always good to step away and come back because I've had. You know, we photograph hundreds of weddings, so I, I would be lying if I said I never had a challenging client situation or mm -hmm. I've never had an unhappy client that has happened. We have a high success rate and a high rate of satisfaction and a high rate of, I would say I've never had, a high rate of being able to diffuse and turn un, an unhappy, unpleasant situation into a positive one where mm -hmm. people come back to us. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the first things I, I do is step step back. Before, Good. before Bronx Girl is infiltrating my business and in my business. <laughs> so let me ask: where, where did you go to high school? Did I you went go to Bronx Science. Yeah, no, I went to Truman High School. Oh, you went to Truman? Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a Bronx I thing. Yeah, I, know. Was in, I was in the nerd program in Truman High School, but I wasn't like Truman High School. Um, I love uh, that. That some of my I'm still close to my Truman, my Truman friends. Yeah. So tell us when you had to set a bridezilla straight. You don't got to give us names, but that'd be hot as hell. But if you had to set a, <laughs> if you had to set a, uh, bright straight. I would straight. say, um, I w I wouldn't say set them straight, reel them back in. Okay. Um, a big, a big. Some of the kinds of bridezilla situations I've encountered were just a matter of somebody wanting to take control over something, and there's two parts to that. Reeling them back in is like one. I'm not doing my job right if you. Feel like you need to control i feel like you haven't we don't there's no trust here some of that is definitely personality re related but what where's the disconnect why why do you feel so nervous because you looked at my work you vetted me you know that 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 needs to be there whether it's with me or anyone else whoever you're in trust with your wedding that has to be there and then right. the other thing is just simply being the expert. I've learned that there are certain, certain situations when you're dealing with a personality that wants to give you 50-page shot list and, uh, you know, give you, uh, tell you when and where you should be doing certain things. Um, I needed to just be assertive. It's really not, doesn't even have to be anything that's negative. It's just a matter of being the expert and kind of 
drawing a line like this is what it's got to be if, in order for us to get you want to ultimately you're appealing to their desire to have a successful outcome we all but, invest in, in in you having beautiful photos. so question we heard about the that one what is your dream client i want to hear about your dream wedding My dream scene. client oh so i have been very blessed to work with a lot of people who i find inspiring and who are just incredible human beings, kind kind people um i work with private individuals i've had celebrity clients i have celebrity clientele or high profile clientele um dream wedding is kind of like twofold i've i've photographed a wedding with somebody who i care about like a friend at a dream location the breakers in um, um west palm beach um and i've also had people who i super like fangirl over which is aren't very many i'm not really i guess it's the gemini in me i don't fangirl often oh she's a like, gemini okay don't, got don't it run. <laughs> don't run um <laughs> But yeah, like Lovey, for example, who I continue to work with um, and admire so much and her wedding was epic. Um, and so when things like that happen where you get to work with people who you admire and look up to, um, it's it, it make, it's very fulfilling. It makes you feel like I'm doing something right. Beautiful. So what did you, <clears throat> um, excuse me, are you still practicing law? Um, I, I'm, I got my pinky toe in there. <laughs> okay, so what did what did mom and dad say when you said, Mom, Dad, I'm a photographer now? So there wasn't there wasn't a need for a bold announcement <laughs> that I had to take off from my, my, my cushy job. <laughs> so um it was uh it was like time to like figure stuff out and you know, you can't be now, it took a while. My, 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 my parents would send me job listings in the beginning. Like, like are you, like, when are you going to get, even when I had a photography business, are you, are you going to get a job? Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, um, it was, if there wasn't a need for this kind of like, this is what I'm doing because it happened so gradually. Like mm -hmm. I lost my job and I started to get opportunities in photography, but then I went back to working as a, as a lawyer, like on and off, um, never like. Uh, full time, I did contract for other firms, so I would do like months long con subcontracts with law firms, um, and so I didn't fully leave the legal field until I've been fully a photographer full time for a little over six years now, where nice. I'm not practicing. <clears throat> so, how did your professional career um, help you in photography like you being a lawyer you understand contracts you understand legalese and all that stuff because some of the con i worked in the law field I, and sometimes i would see a contract that people boilerplate online it'd be like oh my god do you have any idea what you're saying here yeah. so how has being a lawyer affected your business aspect of your work i'd say the biggest thing is um are the like surround itself around the diplomacy and negotiation skills and just kind of understanding, you know, thinking in, in terms of um, problem solving and so being solutions driven, that has been a big part of it. And another one, which is a, a, a really great thing, but I always say, you know, that I say possible ruins you. Um, I think in terms of risk management often, and so um, I had clauses in my contract that didn't directly mention a pandemic, but definitely covered me for this exact type of scenario. Um, and, you know, I, of course, improved it, right, as we see circumstances unfolding. But I think in terms of risk management and um, that allows me to even not only just in the contract, in the document itself, it influences the, the things that I might say when engaging with the clients and how I show up when I'm on wedding day. So it's definitely helped me. And it also just kind of like, I feel like as artists, you know, many of us, myself included, by default, just want to make work. Like creatives, we just want to make beautiful things, right? That business thought is secondary. And I do think I was wired to prioritize that first. The moment I said, you know what, I'm going to find a way to earn a living doing this thing, I switched my priorities. Yes, I wanted mm -hmm. to get really great at being a photographer and I still continue want to get great at being a you know even better photographer. Um, but I 
and I prioritize like getting my house in order and taking care of business and growing my business over everything else, over even my own personal development as an artist. I love it. So in in your work, there's a, a hint of, on, I know you do portraits, but there's a hint of beauty and fashion in your work. And I see it. And, and, and I want to know who are your influences or what inspires you to go in that route with some of your work? So I'm glad you see that in the work. And um, I, it's part of what <laughs> inspires me and has always inspired me. Like, um, definitely not, um, well, I shouldn't say that. I do do some fashion photography and things like that and commercial and beauty work, more commercial than beauty. But um, it's been an influence simply because I just love, love, love that world. Um, mm -hmm. And so- Come to the dark side. <laughs> oh, this, you listen, I would love to. You know, this pandemic has me thinking like, hmm, what other types of things should we be doing over here? Um, but yeah, I, I, I love that I can bring that influence into the wedding world, though. Like that I can find ways to bring some touches of that into my wedding work. Well, it's definitely there. It's showing. It I definitely see. shows. So, you are Sony Audison. Yes, I am. How did that happen? And explain, that explain that journey. How did that happen? I don't even know. Here's the thing. And I say, I don't even know. I, I do believe that how it happened was who I am as a person is that I keep my, I had kind of have these blinders on and I've been doing the work. <laughs> Does that make sense? And one of the quotes that I, one of my favorite quotes um, is be so great. They can't ignore you. And I do, that is has been kind of like, that's like a mantra. Like, I just want to be really great at what I'm doing. And that, that means great at business, really, you know, a, a great creative. And that's what drives me. And I think people noticed. And I think mm -hmm. people want, want to see me win. And so my name started getting floated in places. Um, and, you know, I got on people's radars. And I have, you know, so many people who I can list who have kind of nudged, pushed, a, put a boot in my back saying, hey, to be in these spaces so it started definitely with me um entering the educational world of photography and te uh you know leading um programs at conferences and things like that and it also started with um i'll shout her out because i hope she doesn't kill me she she won't mind audrey willard is like a big supporter she's the goat she really i love her and she is one of the people who put a, you know, put the bug in my ear that you need to be in these spaces. You have a lot that you should be sharing. And even when I was like, eh, nobody wants to hear from me. <laughs> like, no one wants to. She was like, no. And, you know, she's definitely one of those people who, like, kicked me out of my comfort zone. So I don't have, I don't. She kicked I, us a couple of times as well. Yeah. She's still yeah. Doing she, it. And she's still doing it. And what I love about Audrey, she doesn't do it publicly. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. No. No. So we have to. That's why she was one of our first. Was she our first interview? No, she's our second one, as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. So we had the interview as well. So it, yeah. it was giving flowers to someone who definitely deserved them and who have who have been paving the way for a lot of us and, and has been helping a lot us of us that look like us. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so continue. She's behind, she's behind the scenes, um, you know, just just and supportive and. Um, just has been a resource and you know and brutally honest yes yes well i would i wouldn't even say brutal maybe i don't you know i know audrey oh Blake. i don't i don't think it's brutal but no. you know when you, I, you, we're from new so york good, but she 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 right and she's she she's got a big heart you know yeah, she absolutely does. she cares absolutely. about us she cares about black women and she wants to see us win and I, I I just she's a gift to this industry, honestly. Absolutely. So let's finish this Sony story, and then we're gonna go to black women. So let's finish this Sony story. Sure. Sony story. So yeah. So yeah, I, I would attribute it to just kind of doing the work, people noticing, people supporting, floating my name. Um, certainly started to get opportunities offered to me to like present or be in spaces that weren't I didn't even see myself in anyone that looked like me in. And a lot of that started. So, so many, um, I, I st started for me that journey um, in 2019. I met some people um, from the Sony team at, at, at a conference. Um, but I, you know, I honestly 
didn't even realize that I was on their radar in that way. Um, and I joined the, <laughs> I, you know, it, and a lot of, and I could say a lot of opportunities or things that have happened. Um, my philosophy is to just really just do the work, be of service to others, like try to pour into other people without expectation of gaining something. Right. And, um, and I think that has kind of ultimately what has led me here is just really, um, I, it's not something that I pursued, to, to put it that mm. way. It's not something that I even realized that I was honestly, um, you know, surprised when I got the invitation. Um, it was early um, 2020 and in I joined the Artisan Program in April. And, Good for you. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's been an, it's so far it, and continues to be like an amazing, excuse me, um, amazing organization to be a lot of Yeah. Well, um, they've, they've raised the bar on, um, on recognizing black excellence. Absolutely. So we have to say that you, and it's, it's good. Sorry. You didn't, you were on their radar not because you were black. You were on their radar because you were good. Yeah. Black just happened to be a bonus. Yeah. And it just feels good seeing us us being rep being uh, a representation of good art and good people. And of course, a New Yorker is always it always feels good to see <laughs> family. Like, oh man, this is great, you know. And we 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 love it. We love what you're doing. And then and then the younger female photographer, younger women photographers will look up to you. And something to aspire. And it's like, okay, I can do this too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anybody was on the fence, like, well, I need to get this job, but I really want to find my art. Mm -hmm. There was a place to aspire to. So mm -hmm. explain how you got into teaching and your educational platform. So how I got into teaching, so I told you Audrey was, was one of the people, early people to put the bug in my ear and to my Holden was another person um, who I attribute to putting the, the boot in my back. Um, in terms, so one of my very, it, I think it might have been my first. So I had taught at like smaller walk workshops, presented programs um, at smaller workshops, like 20 people that kind of thing. But one of my first kind of like uh, speaking in, teaching in front of an audience greater than 20 <laughs> was at the photo cookout. And um, I had actually had gotten an, uh, it was mystic seminars. Um, so that was kind of, that was actually the first offer I got to speak at a conference. But the first time I actually presented was to a larger audience was at the photo cookout. Um, to Maya, you know, I got that. So that's kind of marked the start mystic seminars, photo cookout, um, Mystic. It was Mystic at Sea, so that was in Cuba. That was like mm -hmm. oh, nice. It was. It was dope. It was so good. Um, oh, she said dope. Yes, <laughs> myself. I <laughs> say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like um. So wait, tell us about Cuba. We gotta hear this. Uh, Dallas is Cuban, by the way. I'm Cuban. Oh, stop, go. Yeah, I love Cuban. It. Well, I love your. I love your place of birth. <laughs> I love it too. I left them when I was really young, so I don't remember much of it, but yeah, have you, I can't have wait to go back? back. Not yet. I'm going back. You got to get back, right? Um, I'm sure I got like only like the, the, you know, I didn't get along enough. We were there. So it was a cruise ship that went to Cuba. I think we got there just before the, the rules and everything kind of closed it up and made it harder to get there as a U.S. citizen. Um, I um, but when we went there, it was a group of small group of photographers. I think there were about 50 of us in total, including vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the most memorable experience. I presented a program, but also we went out and did photo walks. And it just, we, it was a vibe. Like we were walking the streets and, um, you know, just learning and having a field day. It was a photographer's field day. And um, nice. how did Cuba look? Was it like incredible? Did it like a blast from the past? Sensory overload. I think I, well, we see things as photographers, I think through a, the, the eyes and the lens of a photographer. Um, lots of texture and color. Lots of color. Yes. Um, beautiful people. Um, um, like amazing food. Like there was, so, I had sensory overload. One of the things I learned um, 
from Aram and Kanayo uh, was in, you know, they, they, they led classes. Kanayo led a photo walk that was about kind of uh, color, uh, like creating a color story and, and seeing things in the environment. And it was, it was so inspiring because both of those talks kind of shifted my, you know, color. I'd always been intentional about color in my work, but that experience I was left, even though I was there as an educator, I left having learned so much from my peers. And it was just still, it's in a top experiences in terms of a conference. So today. Cuba has climbed into your DNA. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So when you think about that, think about me. <laughs> Alpha. <laughs> Hi, Sony Alpha right. female is here. <laughs> yes, they, yes, she is. So let's talk about um, the female perspective. Mm -hmm. um, Tamaya has opened up these amazing rooms. Polly has opened up these amazing That's rooms. Uh, Audrey has made these amazing rooms that promoted Black excellence. Um. And you're part of that. So are you happy that these things were made? Were they needed? And if so, why? They were absolutely needed. And I'm so happy that people like Tamaya and Audrey and Polly had the vision to fight for it because, you know, and they all do it and have done it in different ways. Some, some methods overlapping, some very, very different. Um, but I'm so happy that they had the foresight to know that that this is important and um you know there are the the the, the ambassadorships that we see and the opportunities that we see that the things that we see black women voices being a presence in today are a result of those efforts and a result of all of us showing up but also a result of those who uh really are were in, are in the trenches they're being vocal they're pushing back and they're getting in trouble, <laughs> you know, like, um, I'm very thankful for them. I, I you know, I, I, my part is by comparison. I mean, not to minimize my contributions to the in industry, but because showing up is important. My existing is important. People like me existing is important. But those efforts of really just kind of not only pushing doors open, but creating new doors for people to walk through is just absolutely. something that is absolutely invaluable and appreciated. So you shot, like you said, hundreds of weddings. You ever think about doing a book of your weddings, a book of your brides, and putting it out and, and showing your work to the world? I absolutely have thought about it. <laughs> I absolutely have, and I there's a couple like that. There's a couple of times where you know, I get messages like, when are you doing a book? Um, that and workshops and even so, I'll tell you one thing about me. I'm very, very, I always told you I'm very business driven and I always prioritize securing the bag over a lot of other things. And yes, some of these opportunities are another way to secure the bag. But when you have a, you know, three three big hungry boys at home that are <laughs> that are like you know i need to be provide for them um that's like a lot of things tend to slip down the priority life will do that yeah yeah but I, that's so that's one of my kind of work in progress things like i did my first workshop actually in 2020 um okay. but that's after years and years of people saying kesha when are you going to do it and i promised to do another one so another one is coming but one thing about me is that I, 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 I struggle with imposter syndrome and in all things. So from uh, the I thought of doing a book, the thought of even becoming an educator, the thought of um, doing my own workshop, it takes me a little minute to get there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. those two, those things at play, just business first. And then also like, should I be doing this? Am I ready to do this at the right time kind of thing? I think, and this is just to give you a, a heads up, um, <laughs> I think it'll be a good business move. Mm -hmm. And it also adds to your legacy. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is uh, we all have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes giving them that little piece makes history. And you may not see it, but um, that's also one of those things that you make money and you don't you won't have to go and do anything. It's you can literally, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. And on top of that, um, 
we we see a lot of other people putting out books, and we would love to see uh, a black a Kesha book, a yep. Kesha book. Okay. Uh, you know, think about it. A wedding photographer. That's something to have on the, the table next to our Avedon and her Ritz and all those things. And so, Gordon Parks. And Gordon Parks, absolutely. But it, it's, it's something to look forward to, and it adds to history, and I, I think it's a good idea. Um, I would take my time, like you like you saying you're doing, but I'm pretty sure if you put it out into the universe and start to say you want to do this, there'll be some publishing Somebody out there will saying, manifest it. hey, let's try this, let's do it. But I think you're definitely worth it, and 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 I'm looking forward to getting my copy, and I want to sign. And I want to sign. <laughs> my sad copy. So when we have your beauty shoot, you come and you bring, oh, you bring out. <laughs> oh, uh, we'll speaking all it. these things into existence today. Absolutely. <laughs> that's absolutely. It. That's, that's, that's what we do. So let me ask you, let's get serious now. What are some of the misconceptions that Black female photographers go through? Um, one of the biggest ones is that you are the help and not, not the art or that you're not... Uh, so I'm thinking in terms of like weddings and stuff. Like people always assume I'm the assistant, or, or you know things like that. Um, so that kind of these preconceived notions they have about uh, race roles and gender roles and things like that all wrapped up in. We got the double whammy about the types of assumptions people are making about us when we show up to work, um, and I'm sure some of that translates into other areas of photography. Prop definitely areas. Any area, it's still a, a white man dominated industry in most categories. When you show up, the expectation is not that you are there to be in the lead. Um, I think another thing is that there are a lot of assumptions about, there, there may be some assumptions about uh, technical abilities. <laughs> you know, like people assume that all uh, some of, that women are afraid of light, that we are, um, I do think that these are not things that are unique to women. Like men struggle with execution. We all like, this is a ever, never ending process of learning and growth. And so Absolutely. those assumptions about skills and execution um, tend to be like default assumed about um, women, especially black women. And, you know, so that's probably something else I would say might comes that comes up. Wow. I've seen you go ahead. Good. I've seen you running around Clubhouse sitting in the cut. <laughs> um, so I'll go to a room and you won't be on stage unless they drag you up there. Okay. What has Clubhouse done for you and changed your mind the way things are working in social media? How's it changed my mind about like social media? If anything, if anything, if anything, anything it may yeah. happen. Like, we all know, without saying so many words, there's a lot of lies out there. <laughs> and there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. And sometimes, and I've seen whenever there's been any misinformation, and that's when I see you jump up, especially when it's legal stuff. <laughs> and know, I've seen you jump up on that stage. Like, um, I'm going to have to disagree that. <laughs> Um... Yeah, there are, and so, some of it is can be dangerous because there's lots of impressionable listening ears. I mean, ultimately, grown adults need to be responsible for vetting the information they receive. And, you know, so, like, you, while it, there's that inner voice, like, like, oh, my God, you can't say this to the people because people will believe you and start doing it. Yes. Um, there's also the component of everyone, if you're on Clubhouse, you should be vetting the information that you get. Um uh, so yeah, it there you. One of my I don't, my sister in law says this uh, phrase a lot, and I just I love it. I don't know who to attribute for this quote, but you, you know, learning to take the meat and throw away the bones. Um, and I think that's in one of the things that Clubhouse has taught me is that there's some really incredible access to people, an abundance of information being shared freely. So take advantage of it. But also learn to take the meat and throw away the bones. All of that, all of those things don't pertain to you. All of those things, not all of that stuff will uh, serve you. So know what parts will fill you and what parts you need to throw away. And I think that was one of my bigger takeaways. And on another note, it's just helped, made me hyper aware of my uh, inclination to ramble. Um, <laughs> I think it's like uh, an introvert thing. Like I find myself. Sometimes if I am on a moderator on a panel, I will set a timer 
for myself because wow. we do I it got, too. I have ADD, and when I start talking, I start a point and it's wrapped into other points, and and it just goes. That's not and ADD. That's Gemini. <laughs> that's Gemini, the racing mind thing, and I'm like trying to get all fifty thousand things that are racing through my mind into one concise point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but it's made me aware of that. I think it's great for people who educate, who speak, um, and things like that because it's kind of raised awareness about how to be deliver a message and deliver something in a concise way that resonates. And succinctly, yep, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So what are some of the biggest lessons you've had with yourself and what are some of the biggest lessons are you passing on to your students? Some of the biggest lessons that I'm passing on um, is to be brave in your work, right? Um, I think I, I've recently described my approach to like deciding things creatively or as as it pertains to lighting as I, i'm a bit of a mad hatter i'm not afraid to experiment or try um i'm not afraid that of uh, things falling flat and not working out because i found that i get the best the, some of the, my best work is born out of me doing something that everyone else said i shouldn't be doing everyone else said this does not make sense being a, a, a creative means being able to trust yourself to do something even when it might not necessarily be the most logical thing to do it might be a little risky and everyone else is like nah that sounds dumb or mm -mm, i don't see that uh you have to be able to stand out on your own so that's kind of like one of my passion things to talk about is just uh you know getting out of your own way just not be yeah. told yourself don't veto yourself on behalf of other people. Oh my um, God, yes. Like that. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that I love kind of teaching about. And then I, I love light. So I love playing around with light. Um, I, I, I love to, and when I say playing around, I'm definitely a person that is, so kind of teaching people how to see, see, see light and pay attention mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. and how to find ways to use it. Um, you know, because we get hammered a lot with rules. This yes. is what you're like. This is what you should be doing. This is how this should be lit. This is what it gotta be this way. Yes. Make sure there's Everyone no shadows. Is right. <laughs> right. Everyone is right. Um, and you know what though? The one of the beautiful things about being a creative is learning the rules, getting a handle on the rules, mastering them even, but then starting to break them. And then crush them. Right, mm -hmm. so that you can create something that is innovative. Yeah. And, and otherwise it just gets boring, you know? Um, Agree. So those are kind of the things I love to talk about. So I'm outside of photography, I'm glad you do. Are you a book <laughs> reader or a TV show watcher? Both. Both, um, she's a Gemini. Hey, don't <laughs> so, and, and when I say book reader, honestly, I'll be a hundred percent honest. I'm right now because of busyness. I'm an, audible, I'm an audible girl. So See, I know this. So what are you, so what are you reading <laughs> so that, or listening to right now? Um, I got a, a sneak. Um, actually, I'm not listening to. It, I'm actually reading it. But I got an advanced copy of Lovey's book, Professional Tr Troublemaker. Nice. Um, okay. Um, so that's what I'm into right now. Nice. Um, Oh my gosh, I cannot remember the name of this book, but it's one that's really great about. It's called um, Light is Light. Okay. I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I love this girl. I'm, I'm this woman. I'm sorry. I don't mean to call you girl. Forgive me. No, it's all good. You I, are I, absolutely amazing, Kesha. Beautifully. So, what is, your, what is your um, guilty pleasure on television? This is embarrassing. <laughs> my guilty pleasure. All right. So I have a couple that I'm like, I don't want to publicly claim that I'm I'm watching this, but um and it's actually not that bad. But I have rewatched it's not that bad at all. Like Mean Girls? I've watched Mean Girls, but that's not, that's not <laughs> No, I wanna hear it. I wanna hear it. I, I, I do like a good um like teen drama series. But okay. um, so one of the things that I like, I love a thriller and all that kind of stuff, but I like, um, there's nothing like Heart of Dick out there that I can find where it's just lighthearted. And I've rewatched that series start to finish like a hundred thousand times. Really? Um, really? So it's like, 
it's um very kind of it's just a happy it, you know they have they have conflict and and problems and and little bitty drama but it's the cutest show and i've rewatched it a thousand times it's like my little escape when i just need to enter somebody's bubble um but another one that i'm not ashamed to admit but it's a little a little bit uh it's a soap i guess um sisters by tyler perry sisters okay, nice. okay. i okay. love that show <laughs> Um, I love that show. I, I I I'm watching and I'm cackling, and my husband will probably kill me that he watches it with me and <laughs> together. Um, it's it's funny. It's like a soapy drama comedy situation. Listen, as long as good TV, as long as good, good TV. television. If you like a if you like a good teen show, watch Pen Fifteen. Oh, I haven't heard of that. It's oh. on Hulu. It's, gonna it's a comedy, you, though, it's but it's going to make you. It's a comedy wreck. that deals with serious issues. Yes, oh. it's incredible. Pen or pin? Pen, pin. like writing with a pen. It looks like penis. It, the word when you put the word together <laughs> looks like penis. Oh, so there you go. They did that oh. on purpose. Okay. <laughs> oh, so you said penis? You got it. Pen fifteen. It was like, what are you talking about? Okay. P e n one five. So give that a give that a give that a shot, and we could talk about it in private. Oh my god. Okay. Sorry. Where do you see Kesha's business going in the future? So I see, where do I see my business? I am. Like what is the next, what's the next level the next for you? Kesha? I'm really interested in products. So I am mm. working on a couple of things that I don't feel ready to talk about yet, but I really okay. want to enter the product space of the photography industry. Um, and and, but let me ask you a question before you go on. Are you not ready to talk about it or do it because you're in your own way? I'm or somebody to kick it back in? No, I'm a person. Okay. I'm a, you know that saying, move in silence? That's me. I don't announce Perfect. it. Talk about Got things. it. Got it. I talk about it when it's done. Got it. That's the so safest that's, place to be. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. Because nobody can talk you out of it. Nobody can steal it from you. Yeah, it's right. done. And you don't trick yourself out. Like, I feel like. Once you start talking about it, you can't, like, I don't know. I just, I like to just do the work, get things done. And then when it's done, that's when I talk about it. Because it's real. It's not a, I, this is what I'm about to do. Don't speak about it, be about it, right? <laughs> Got it. You were saying, and when you were talking about your business, you spoke in pronouns of us and we. Just how big is Kesha's business? Like, oh, we're how big is your team? We're a small team. So when I say us and we, um, I, I, I'm acknowledging that it's not just me by myself. Got um, it. So my husband and I uh, work this business together, and then nice. I have, I have um, associate photographers. Uh, I have, they, you know, three. Um, they're three staples, um, and then I, a couple of others that I work with. So I and I have, you know, an assistant and all that wonderful. So it's a small team, but it's, so I'm not an island. I do wear a lot of hats in my business, and I'm really. That's another, I guess, immediate personal goal is to, you know, I've already started kind of ex branching out and delegating those hats to other people, putting mm -hmm. team in place for that, and it feels really great to do that. Um, so yeah, that's where we're that that's where we are. <laughs> do, you, do you mentor? Do you mentor people? Um, yes, not so. I do offer mentorship, like mentorship, um, but. Again, a lot of my mentoring it just happens organically. Organically, um, right? I, you know, I do have like you can uh, book mentorship uh, uh, hours of mentorship with me, but um, I also unofficially am I definitely people that I work with that are my team and things like that, that in in creativity and in and also in business and things like that. But um, just photographers in the industry reach out to me all the time, and we chat. We talk. I've had people call me randomly, and I spend mad time on the phone with them. Or people call me from time to time. Um, to the extent that I have the space and time to to have those conversations, I will because um, I and, and with the hopes that they'll pay that forward and pour into someone else in a similar way. People oh, have done to me. I I have had. Um, there's this. I'm gonna mispronounce his last name. His name is Tunji. I want to say. Sarami. But one okay. time, he's a wedding photographer, incredible wedding, wedding photographer, and he probably doesn't even know this. But, you know, I think of this as an example that one time I, uh, like, assisted him at a wedding way back, starting out, I wasn't full-time yet. And he showed me something at, on the back of his camera. He just quickly dem demoed 
um, something about the way this, he sets exposure in a in um to 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 get it right for a reception space. And I had the, an aha moment. He was working. He didn't have to show me something. He didn't have to teach me something in that moment. But I think he saw something and said, or you know, and took a took a couple minutes to just show me something and it clicked something clicked for me. And I have like I say him by name, but there are a myriad of stories of people who did little things like that and people who spent time just pouring into me and teaching me things that they didn't have to do. Oh my um, God. And so I'm I'm of the mindset that I'm happy to do that with people. I love it. I love it. We're love at it. the point that we're almost done with this interview. We're at the end. And I have the question I always ask everybody, what are three adjectives that describes Kesha? Three adjectives. Okay. Uh, empathetic. Impulsive. Oh, you're true, Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomatic. No. All Gemini traits. That's, <laughs> all of them. Yes, yes. That's the magic of your business. Having those traits are the magic of your business. Absolutely. Um, God, this has been a great interview. With yeah, you. I, felt, I felt like it was so, so it fast. It really was fast. <laughs> and, and the funny thing about it is, I've known you for years. We, we ran in the circles, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, but we never had to cross paths. So I'm glad that we crossed paths because it gives me a better insight into you Absolutely. as a woman as um, an artist and as a sister. So I'm happy about that. Now, thank, thank you to Tanya. Thank for, you to Tanya. Thank you to thank Audrey. You, Tanya. <laughs> Tanya definitely was Tanya the one. Audrey were the ones. Tanya kept saying, you guys need to, like, so she speaks to us like that. Mm -hmm. You guys need to check out this person because they're really good. Uh, you need to check out them. <laughs> Have you checked out this? Look, let me show you. Let so, me, and she keeps sending your links. So, yeah, so like, okay, we, we got it. We got, got it. it. We she's going to do is like, yeah, we got it. So Tanya definitely was uh, heavy, heavy, heavy. We have to give her her love. Yeah, she always put us on on to new, like, things that we don't know. Because we don't know everything. We, we got don't. everywhere. So we don't. When, when they introduce us to somebody, we definitely take it um, serious. We take it seriously. Absolutely. So now we got to ask this boring question. Uh-oh. What's in your camera bag? Oh, a lot of things. Okay, so being a wedding photographer, I carry a lot of things. I don't necessarily, you know, walk around with those things. Um, but you want specific gear or like just that's like, your this is no, your question. This, this is your interview. Whatever. You can say whatever you One person said I got a camera and a lens. Is that I, okay? I, that's it. So I'm I have my mirrorless camera bodies from Sony, so the A92, the A7R4. I love my ultra wide lens, so like the 12 to 24 GM. Um, I, ha I have, I love to actually sh uh, shoot portraits with ultra wide lenses. So um, people always, meet, always think I'm bugging for doing that, but I like to. Um, and uh, I, the 85, 135, so those are kind of the lenses, a macro lens, a 90 millimeter macro. Um, and then in terms of light, I so I've tried it all with light, but currently and for the past, I'd say, couple of years, I'm Team Pro Photo. So um, Team Pro Photo. <laughs> team Pro Photo. I have the A1X, uh, B10 Plus, B10. Um, so those are my kind of go-tos for event lighting. Like, you know, that's definitely suitable for the person that is working on location. So lots of things like that. I have all the other, I have Magma system. So, I, you know, uh, Lots of compact things that I can use on the go, um, nice. but I also have like continuous lighting. So I'm Stella Pro lights. And <laughs> in my when I'm on, like I carry all the things, like because weddings can throw curveballs at you. So I will have reflectors and umbrellas and even small soft boxes um, on hand uh, just in case. But I'm a lightweight girl. A whole fast harness. People ask me about that a lot. So I, I when I'm working a wedding. I have two cameras strapped to my body and I use a whole face on it. So you're looking like Laura Croft, right? You'd be like, Yes, I, <laughs> I actually I that was one of uh one one Halloween few years back, I had a um Halloween Foxwoods Casino has like this huge Halloween party mm -hmm. and I, I was booked to photograph the a, a series of events. They had a bunch of events that night. And so that was my costume. I had the shorts nice. with the thing strapped to my leg. And it, <laughs> that's and it. The, that and is the cameras it. were my guns. That's <laughs> it. I put an that's extra it. long ponytail on. <laughs> yes. Nice. I did it up. 
That was that. Was, that's actually one of my favorite costumes that I ever had. <laughs> because that's the closest to who you are. <laughs> so it. we need one thing. We need to take this. Uh, what do you call it? This thumbnail, thumbnail photo. So we going to hold it for like what, three to five. Three seconds. to five seconds. We're going to okay. just hold a three to five second pose. Get pose so ready. we get a cute thumbnail out there. So we're going to get okay. close. Uh, get your we, model. Get, oh, get your light up. You ready? There we go. Oh, you saw the light turn. Yeah, on? I know, right? She said, let's do it. So I'm going to count to three. We're going to hold it. One, two, three. What are you going to throw on that one? <laughs> do I look crazy? <laughs> what the, why is he doing that? <laughs> I, love the, I love the dimension. We got foreground, background going. Absolutely. That's it. We got it all going. <laughs> Kesha, thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. I, I, I have to say, before we go, I really enjoyed talking to you both. You have the most beautiful energy. And thank you. so easy to talk to. You've been very kind. Um, as an introvert who gets, like, knots in her stomach every time I have to, especially live, makes me nervous. You guys, you both were just so easy to talk to and warm. And I, I really want to talk to you, like, a million more times. Oh, we yeah. were gonna have it. Okay. We're gonna have it. We have a new friend. Yes. You from the Bronx you. too? Yes. We gotta go back and get some pizza with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for this interview. You are so and thank you for allowing us to give you your flowers. Thank you. So thank you have a wonderful day. You too. Bye everyone. Continue to be amazing. Bye.